now by the shadow levelling up secretary lisa nandy representing the opposition this morning um the story's not going anywhere is it no, I don't think it is. And the desperate thing about it is that the more that this goes on, the less the government is able to focus on what's actually happening to people around the country. Boris Johnson could end this today. He could come to the House of Commons, he could come clean about what has been going on in Downing Street on his watch and his involvement in breaking the rules that he made. And then we could focus on the crisis that is unfolding right across this country. People don't know how they're going to keep their heads above water with that triple whammy of shopping bills going up, energy bills going up and the tax hike that's about to hit people in a few months' time. I want to talk about levelling up in a second, but another couple of things that we did speak to your counterpart about and that includes what was said at the dispatch box about Jimmy Savile um, and we had the uh, leader your boss sat there just yesterday was furious about it Prime Minister seems to have doubled down in a, an article in The Sun this morning. I'm absolutely disgusted by what we saw unfold um, from Boris Johnson this week. I used to work with children and young people before I came into Parliament, many of them who'd been abused themselves. And the idea that you would throw lies and mud around in the hope that it will deflect from your own behaviour and your own political problems and use child abuse victims and survivors as pawns in that game, I think this is a new low that that we've seen from the Prime Minister and something that I never would have expected to see from the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. We got the impression uh, from Mr Gove that Lindsay Hoyle was wrong, the Speaker of the House, when he was suggesting that there's a case to answer there. I mean, I, the, you know, I've, I've known Keir Starmer a long time and when he was Director of Public Prosecutions, not in charge of this decision, not the reviewing lawyer in this case and not involved in it at all, I went to see him because I was working with traffic children. Um, I went to see him to say these are children who are victims of abuse but are often being picked up and prosecuted for offences. He saw me at a time when many, many doors in power were closed to us and made sure that they brought in New guidelines in order to try and change that for those children. I can tell you right now that there are some politicians in this country, including Keir Starmer, who have been trying to help people um, who've been who've been abused as children. There are other people like Boris Johnson who are disgracefully trying to use people, survivors of child abuse, as political pawns. I don't think he's fit to hold office. I've never said that about a Prime Minister in my lifetime, but I think it's absolutely clear from what we saw this week and the way in which he's doubled down that that is the case. As far as PPE is concerned, a lot of the papers this morning carrying the story that billions of pounds was wasted on PPE. I put that to Mr Gove and he said some of it can be dismissed as an accounting error. I just find this extraordinary. He's just published a white paper on levelling up, the plans that we've been waiting for for two and a half years that have no new money behind them, and yet the government is writing off billions of pounds in fraud and they've wasted billions of pounds on PPE. He's, he, he's he said it wasn't a waste because um, it, it can be an accounting error and also we needed it at the time. I mean, tell, it was overpriced. tell that to communities across this country who have watched money being stripped out out of our towns for the last decade. That has been turbocharged in the last three years since this Prime Minister took office. You were reporting, your reporter was uh, reporting from Wolverhampton today. The amount of cash, the refund that is being given to Wolverhampton is far outweighed by the amount of money they've lost even since the Prime Minister took office. And yet you have a Secretary of State who's responsible for this agenda who can casually sit here and dismiss £8 billion as an accounting error. I just think that's extraordinary. He didn't say all of it was an accounting error, but he said some of it could be put down. I mean, the, the way in which the government is so dismissive about these things, you know, the £4 billion that the Chancellor wrote off in fraud just a few days ago, that money could be put to such use in our towns and cities across the north of England. We could see good jobs created back in places that have seen them depart for decades, and yet the Prime Minister just sits and dismisses that as a necessary, a necessary expense, numbers on a spreadsheet. These are not numbers on a spreadsheet. This is our money and we want it back. Uh, this is what I, I think we've got the grab from Michael Gove, haven't we, a little bit earlier. This is what he was saying. I'm not going to apologise for the fact that we moved heaven and earth to get all the PPE that people on the front line needed. Mm. Now, some of those figures are uh, uh, accountancy markdowns. 8.7 billion? No, yes, yeah, some of it is. Because what some sort of, of accountancy are you using? Well, the key thing here is 
that uh, the, uh, the price that we paid for PPE at the height of the pandemic is greater than the cost now. And that is because everyone was in a global race to find that PPE. And a PPE. lot of it was rubbish and you couldn't no, use it. No, um, more than 97% of it okay, was so absolutely was, right for the so front line. I mean, I think this just goes to the heart of the problem. You've got this, these announcements today that are supposed to be putting power back into our hands locally, but actually as doing exactly what this government has done for a decade, which is taking power back to the centre. Meanwhile, at the time that Michael Gove is talking about, you had local councils, you had public health providers ringing around, procuring their own PPE because the government system was in complete and utter chaos. Had care home workers buying things off Amazon to try to deal with the crisis that was unfolding. And the government just wasn't stepping up. And now we've got this, uh, this series of excuses, this string of excuses about these contracts that have been handed out often to their mates uh, who've made great profits through this pandemic when people had to step up and do this themselves. I think Michael Gove should just listen to himself and reflect on the fact that we did step up in many parts of this country when the government didn't. Give us powers back to actually deliver things for ourselves and we will show you what can be done. They're trying to do that by uh, levelling up and, and spending money around the country. They're trying. I mean, you know, I think Michael Gove has been trying, actually. He's been running around Whitehall for the last few months, desperately trying to cobble together some announcements to put into this white paper. But having seen the white paper, it was leaked to me last night and spent the night going through it. What we've got is a series of rehashed announcements, some of which are so old, they were actually originally made by Gordon Brown when he was the Labour Prime Minister in 2008. This just simply isn't good enough. We need good jobs back in our towns with good wages. We need money back into people's pockets so that people can spend on our high streets and our town centres can thrive again so that young people don't have to get out in order to get on. And instead what we've got is these, these big slogans and absolutely nothing behind it. Not just no new money, but no new powers either. Yeah, He's going to have a dialogue with the northern mayors about whether new powers are needed. We've told him they're needed. Give us the power to drive that change in our communities ourselves and we will show you what we yes. can do. You say no new money, but as he pointed out, there was a shed load of money earmarked by the Chancellor and he's just telling us how it's going to be spent now. So that money is money that is earmarked every year and it's just been allocated in this white paper to the same places that would normally get it. This is rehashed, recycled but it's more money. Focus. And well, it's it's not actually. I mean I, I wish it was, Kay. This is personal to me. I have skin in the game, as you know, being a Wigan girl yourself. This is not just about people, voters. This is about my friends, my family, my neighbours, my constituents. It's about whether we places like Wigan that within living memory once powered this country and built our wealth and influence can do so again. And I've seen what that looks like. I was in Grimsby with Keir Starmer last week meeting young apprentices who are powering the world through the renewables industry. It puts money back into people's pockets. It makes our town centres thrive again. And instead what we've got is a 100-page essay celebrating the glories of the Roman Empire and the Medici-style renaissance that Michael Gove wants to see across the country. I mean, this is just nonsense. People will see that this is a government in free fall. It has all the hallmarks of a government that is out of energy and ideas. We were promised a lot, but getting absolutely nothing to show for it. Former Shadow Foreign Secretary, um, are the government on the right tack when it comes to Ukraine? I think that they are. I think it's absolutely right to say that we will stand up to Russian aggression and that we will stand with NATO and with our allies, including Ukraine, in doing so. I think we should be far more focused on cleaning up the dirty money that flows into the city of London. That's something that we've been urging the government to do for several years now since the Russia report was published. 21 recommendations in that report, not a single one yet implemented in full. The government needs to take that seriously if they're going to be taken seriously in Moscow. But we absolutely stand together as a country against President Putin and Russian aggression. It will not stand. OK, looking forward to Prime Minister's questions? I mean, I never look forward to Prime Minister's questions. I, I absolutely do. loathe I the thing. I know, but I mean, just... I think people look at it and just think, what are you all doing? I mean, you know, we've got a Prime Minister who won't tell the truth. He obviously 
gates, he won't answer the question. And most people around this country are just absolutely desperate to know, why are you hiking up my taxes? Why aren't you doing anything about these massive energy bills? How am I going to keep my head above water? And why have we got, after two and a half years, these plans for levelling up the country that amount to nothing more than a hill of beans? Mm. Um, I organise the lighting cherry and white just for you. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, if you're from Wigan, you know. If you don't, you don't. Wigan warriors, everybody. <laughs> the right type of rugby. <laughs> there you go. It's good to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thank you.